So our next thing we're making is a lasagna. And I can definitely th show you a few little restaurant tricks on that one. So to start that, we've got leeks and red peppers and mushrooms that are going into that. So we're going to start by sauteing our leeks because we want those to soften up first. And as I kind of flow through this, it really, if anybody has any questions about stuff, please feel free to raise your hand or shout them out. So we're going to start sauteing our leeks. Doesn't take a lot of oil. There is moisture in them, um, so they're going to release a good amount of moisture as well. But they take longer to cook than your peppers or your mushrooms do, so those go in the pan first. Okay? So let's talk about leeks a little bit. What are they? They're big and weird when you see them in the grocery store. It is part of the lily family, just like onions are, just like garlic is, just like shallots, um, just like a lot of those, those vegetables that you're familiar with. But we don't really do too much with leeks because, I don't know, we just don't, you know? We weren't brought up doing it, so we don't. Well, one thing that's difficult about leeks is they generally tend to be kind of dirty. They're grown in real sandy soil. So I'm gonna show you how to cut them and clean them up um, so that when you want to use them at home, you don't maybe put them into a soup or put them into a lasagna and find that <laughs> gritty stuff in your teeth when you're eating it. So you'll see they start to soften up a little bit too. So that's when we're going to put our peppers in. And then the more vegetables we put in there, the more of the moisture just starts to come out too. And once those get warm, and then we'll put our mushrooms in. So we can turn our soup down a touch too. And let you, that just simmer for a bit. All right, so leeks. When you're getting them, you want to look for a nice uniformity all the way down. Um, when there's a big bulb on the end, it means they basically weren't picked fast enough. You also want to find them that still have the root attached at the bottom. They just hold up better, they'll last longer. Um, you always want to have some of the green up top. Sometimes uh, some produce managers and grocery stores and whatnot will already start to clean them. They'll take the, uh, you know, the root end off. They'll take some of the green off. You don't really want it because they're not cleaning anything for you. The dirty part that you actually want to clean when you get home, trim this little end off, and then you can get rid of some of the green up top, but really, there's nothing wrong with it. Use it. I just take a little bit off because it tends to get kind of dirty and it's not as aesthetically pleasing as it could be. But take your leek, and you want to split it right down the middle. Can you guys see that? So the part that gets dirty on them that you really want to watch is in between these right here. And this one's actually fairly clean. Um, but you'll find little bits of dirt and little bits of sand always in there. And that's really what you want to clean. So there's a couple ways to go about doing it. One is just to soak them like this. They tend to float. Dirt doesn't. So it'll tend to fall. The other way to do it is to go ahead and cut them ahead of time. You know, cut them however you're going to cut them or however you're going to cook with them. And then you can just chuck them in water like that too. So they will float for you as you see. The dirt won't float for you. So you can do this and then the dirt will generally just fall to the bottom and let it settle and then scoop it off the top. Okay, so neat new vegetable that we don't use too often. Any questions on the leeks so far or anything? Yes, ma'am. Not really, no. And I think, honestly, that's because people just don't use them that much, you know, because they're not that popular of a vegetable, but they're a very hearty vegetable. They're not hard to cook by any means. They're hard to grow, from what I understand. What's that? How do they taste? Um, think of a green onion that's not quite as sharp. So like a scallion, but with not quite as much kick. And especially when you cook them down, they get a real nice richness to them. So we're going to give them our mushrooms now. Now, I think your recipe might call for granulated garlic or garlic powder too, but we're going to use fresh garlic for our lasagna vegetables today. And while those are sauteing too, you can see we got our soup simmering very nicely. We're going to turn that down even more. Beautiful. So we're just. There wasn't garlic in there? No. Well, there should be. How much? Uh, I would put for this recipe, um, put a good tablespoon of chopped fresh garlic. Okay. 
Let me check my notes. I thought there was. Maybe not. Well, there ought to be. Yeah, that's one great thing about cooking, too, is when I try to do, when I do these, I try to make it as informal as possible because there's one surefire way to mess something up in the kitchen is if you take it way too seriously or if you think about it too much. If you're not having fun with it, it's not likely that you're going to go do it again, you know? And, I mean, there's, there's cookbooks named The Joy of Cooking, you know? That's why. Because it, it is a joy if you don't make it so difficult and annoying. So, yeah. It is a little tougher the further you get up. It gets woody. Um, I could toss you a piece so you could chew on it if you'd like. Um, there. The whiter part is, um, oh, got it. The whiter part is a lot more tender and a lot easier to eat. But the further up you go, um, it does get kind of woody and gritty. Um, you definitely want to cook it um, if you're going to use it. And that's partly why, too, you see me, I take off the top couple inches. Sort of like if you uh, have asparagus at home. You know, when you take it and you snap it, and that root part is the part you really don't want to eat unless you're going to make asparagus soup. What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can certainly cook it. It would be great in a salad. I love fresh leeks in a salad. The thing about that is I really suggest that you cut them up really nice and fine. So if you're going to have them, um, they're a little chewier. Think about like celery. So you want to cut them really, really fine and then put them on top of a uh, salad or mix them in with something. So like that. How long do they keep? Honestly, quite a while. Not as long as an uh, onion sitting in your counter, um, but longer than, say, a green onion in your fridge. Now, along with that, too, when you put them in your fridge, they're just like any other onion. Um, you kind of want to keep them in a separate part of the fridge. Otherwise, if you got yogurt or something in there, your, your blueberry oikos Greek yogurt might end up tasting like blueberry leek oikos grape yogurt, which would be a little weird. <laughs> Maybe if that's what you like, go for it. But to me, it would be a weird fusion, exactly. <laughs> so our garnish for the vegetables and the lasagna is just about good to go. And we've got a ricotta that we're going to put together. I think your recipe calls for low-fat ricotta. Calls for a little bit of Parmesan cheese in there, a little bit of mozzarella cheese in there, and it calls for green peppercorns. I love green peppercorns. They are hard to find. They're really hard to find. Green peppercorns dried just by themselves are not that common unless you know a spice guy or you live right by Eastern Market or, I don't know, maybe you've got some special connection. Oftentimes, if you find them in the grocery store, they're a lot of times in a little can that's in a brine, which is wonderful. Um, but any pepper's fine. Like this, for example, this has been sitting on my windowsill at home, and it's a pepper blend. It's got pink peppercorns, white peppercorns, green peppercorns, and black peppercorns. That's great. Whatever you got at home is just fine. So you crack a little bit of pepper in there. Notice we're not adding any salt to anything either. It's really not that necessary when you're playing with some of these nice flavors. So you want to mix it up. You don't necessarily have to add the egg to it that a lot of people have always thought. You've got to add egg to lasagna. It's not necessary. Um, and then here, we're going to show you one of those cool restaurant tricks. All right, so we've got our ricotta. Actually, we're going to show you a few cool restaurant tricks. We've got our ricotta right there. How many people at home have like a nice lasagna pan, you know, whether it's your little brother who worked in a restaurant and stole one and you're like, sweet, this is the heaviest duty pan I've got. I love this thing. I'm never losing it. Or it was this beautiful piece of, you know, glass cookware that, you know, was made before glass cookware exploded in your oven. Um, or just a really nice lasagna pan that you'd want to use if you're at home, but you're not going to take it to a tailgate because you're thinking, I'm never going to see that pan again if I take it to a tailgate. And I'll tell you a secret, you won't. Because you won't see it. You'll lose it. You'll leave it in a garage. It'll end up in somebody else's kitchen. You know, you'll remember it 30 miles down the road. And then somebody who's still there waiting to, un to get their car out of the parking lot will be like, ooh, neat. <laughs> and you'll never see it. So foil pans, there's nothing wrong with them. Except we tend to think, if I make lasagna, in a foil pan. It's going to go in the oven for a half an hour to an hour. And I know it's going to burn because I'm putting cheese in there. Not necessarily. 
when we're doing them in restaurants, what we'll do is we'll do these cool pans, but you always take a second pan, put a splash of water in the bottom of it, put that on top of it, so there's a, a water barrier there, just like a really, really expensive cookie sheet that's got that air barrier. We're doing this, but we're putting water in there so it's even better, like if you're baking a custard at home, how you put it in a water bath. Same principle. And then when you cook it, you'll wrap plastic wrap over it, over both pans, and then you'll wrap foil over both pans. So you're actually generating some steam and you're generating a gentle water heat underneath it and your lasagna will never burn on you. Unless, you know, if you leave it in the oven for a day, it might. But if you cook it for a normal amount of time, it's, n it's not gonna burn. The plastic wrap, the worst that'll happen is it's gonna stick to the, the uh, aluminum foil, which is also great because I'm sure everybody's done some sort of a baked tomato pasta in, a, in an oven and put foil on it. You ever see how it just eats away the foil sometimes? The acidity of the tomatoes just starts to break down that aluminum foil. The plastic wrap protects that and you're never like picking little bits of aluminum foil out of the cheese on top at the end. So just another one of those little tricks. So when we go to build it, one of the first things you want to do is always put a splash of tomato sauce on the bottom. And we've thinned this out a little bit. Um, your recipe calls for thinning it out. And the reason being, um, this recipe is a no-bake recipe, so, or I'm sorry, a no-boil recipe, so we're using the no-boil noodles, which are great. Um, I like to use fresh. You can use fresh if you want. Doesn't matter. Use whatever you got lying around. So you want to spread some of that out. I think it calls for three cups. And then, and this is just whatever's available at the grocery store. I picked it up last night. So you lay them out. And then another little restaurant trick is called a pastry bag. Something that we use all the time just to make life easier. Um, if you don't have one, that's fine. Just go use a uh, plastic bag and cut the end off. Um, we use them just because they're super easy and they're neat. But if you see how it works, you can just fill it. And then when you put it in there, we'll move it over here so the camera can get a better shot of it. It just layers everything down there for you. So you'd layer some of that in. You'd layer some of your vegetable mixture in. And then if you notice, I'm not really being too careful about how I spread it out. I'll show you why. Here's the next restaurant trick. Some cheese, some more cheese, and that's probably more cheese than what your recipe calls for. <laughs> Holly, I'll just throw that out there. When you put your next layer of pasta down, if you're using uh, fresh pasta, doesn't really matter. Spray the bottom of this pan, and I should have mentioned you should spray the bottom of your other pan too. Take this pan, this is just, I mean, these cost $2 for two of them, I think, or $2 for three of them. Lay it on top, press it out like this. Can you see that? Is the camera showing it well enough? Yeah. So press that out, and what ends up happening is it evenly disperses all your filling for the lasagna. So you can make them at home, and you get this beautiful lasagna that comes out great every time, nice and even from edge to edge, and it's just wonderful. So, we'll continue on. A little bit more vegetable garnish. A little bit more ricotta. This bag is actually made out of canvas. You can throw it in your dishwasher. Yep, you throw it in the dishwasher. You throw it in the dishwasher a hundred times and it'll be just fine. They're made by a company called Ateco. If you're from uh, Ann Arbor, you could probably find them at, um, actually the, I believe it's Barnes Hardware on Stadium. They've got a great kitchen section. Um, Hollanders down in Carytown probably has them. Kitchen Port, when it used to be around, would have them. So they're, they are available, you just gotta look around for them. Um, if you can't find them, plastic bag. And they actually make plastic ones that are come on a roll. Um, you can find in, in fact, like a Michael's, a good craft store that's got a nice like cake decorating section will definitely have them. And they're not expensive. I think they're three bucks. So it's one of those really inexpensive kitchen and things that you can have lying around, run it through your dishwasher and use it the half a dozen times you need it every year. So we'll put our last layer on. 
And yes, I probably am building this bigger. It's a bigger pan. That's my uh, <laughs> thing. It calls for an eight by ten or an eight by twelve, and this is a nine by thirteen. So that's my excuse, Holly. So cover it like that, and that's your last press. And then it's just a little bit more cheese. Make sure you've got that water in the bottom pan, plastic, foil, oven. I think it was 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. And when it comes out, it should be gorgeous. Now, one neat last restaurant trick as far as lasagna is concerned. If you're, say, serving it to someone and you want to be able to scoop it out and put it on a plate and make it look nice, chill it. And once it's cold, cut it out. Cut it out, scoop it out, and then heat each individual portion. So if you're at home and when you eat lasagna with the family, by the fourth piece it looks like somebody just stuck their paws in there and just <laughs> tore it all apart. If you cool it, then cut it and scoop it and heat it piece by piece, it comes out gorgeous. That's exactly how we do it in restaurants. So that when you see the picture, you look at the Stouffer's box in the freezer and it looks like this like, amazing square, like it's in suspended animation lasagna. That's how they do it.